Michael here, and today I'm going to take a look at a fluid head tripod. Now, if you're not familiar with what a fluid head tripod is, um, it's different than just your standard one in that it creates a tension so that you can create smooth movements, either panning or tilting, and it, it holds slightly larger gear, a um, little bit heavier gear on top of your tripod. Um, I used one a while ago, but, but for the last couple of years, I've really just used my portable tripod or a gorilla pod or uh, my ball head on top. But recently I've wanted to do a little bit more cinematic stuff. And so I wanted to get some real smooth panning and tilting. So I thought it was time for me to, to look into a fluid tripod head. And so I, I began to look and wow, uh, they're all over the place in price. And so I thought, well, I'm not sure where I want to go with this thing. So I don't want to spend three, four hundred dollars or even a hundred dollars on a fluid head. So I went to looking around for something a little bit less expensive and I came across a few. Uh, but this is the one that I landed on and this is the one I decided to take a look at. Um, it's the King Joy, right? Um, and this I found, you know, it's, it's professional photographic equipment. So it's a professional fluid head. Uh, and I got to tell you, um, I define professional different than I think maybe some others define professional. So at, at under $100, and in this case, under $50, like $35 for this thing, um, I, I kind of chuckled a little bit at the, the word professional because... Uh, I really wasn't sure about that. And as I've gotten it and played with it, it's not professional, right? But the reality is I wasn't looking for something professional. I mean, I do have some professional gear, but um, I'm used to um, getting premium stuff when I, when I buy professional equipment. When I'm just testing stuff out and when I'm looking at different things or I'm trying to go a different direction, um, and, and while this is not a bad fluid head at all, right? I just, it just doesn't meet the criteria for being called professional. But again, I think people could be, could define professional um, in any number of ways. It's like calling yourself a professional photographer. Some people define themselves as professional if they've sold some of their work or they get hired to take some pictures. That constitutes being a professional. And others have much more rigorous standards. Um, and in, in terms of what the industry supports, um, you know, professional is in the eye of the beholder. So. Um, while I don't necessarily think that this is a professional grade fluid head, um, I wasn't looking for that. And I'm not sure what else you might want to call it. it. It is basically just a fluid head tripod. So, so let, me, let me get into it here. Um, so it has all the basics required to be a fluid head tripod. It does come with um, the adapter to go from 3 eighths to 1 quarter inch to fit on the top of your a tripod, whatever mounting piece you might have. And it offers um, a few knobs on it, and I'll just kind of walk through those knobs really quick. So, so this one here in the front, right, it allows you to move the handle um, to a different position. So depending on what your needs are, and you know, once you get it where you want it and you just tighten this up, um, it, it holds quite well. I mean, I was, I have no, no qualms with, with that whatsoever. Um, these two wing knobs are, they, they're called locking knobs. Their, their documentation calls them a locking knob. And, and they're not really a locking knob in the respect that you would expect a locking knob to be kind of a positive on or off, lock or unlock. And, and these are more, you know, you, you tighten it up um, and it puts pressure on the internal component and that stops it from moving, right? And so essentially it's locked, but it's not truly a locking knob. Man, then yeah, okay, so I'm splitting hairs there, and that's not a big deal. But does it does it do what it says it's gonna do? Yes. You know, if you loosen it up, it allows it to move. If you tighten it down, it holds it in place. And so essentially it locks it into place. It's just not what you and I might consider to be called an actual locking knob where it's a positive on or a positive off. And then you have two knobs, and there's two of those, one for panning and one for tilt. Um, and then you have the tension knobs, and these little knobs here are what provide the tension so when you when you undo the positive locking knobs right you can set the tension of how easy it is to move this head up 
and down. And, and it provides resistance. That's the kind of fluid nature of it, is it provides resistance so that you decide what tension you need based on the weight of your equipment, based on how you want to move, et cetera. And these, this one for the tilt um, worked quite well, actually, with one caveat. Um, this is not, because this is a lower end, $35, $40 um, head, it doesn't have active resistance. It's a, it's a passive resistance. And, and the difference for that is, is really just a matter of when your camera gear, see a, a really high-end professional fluid head would balance your gear, and regardless of where you tip the handle, that resistance would stay the same. And what happens with this one is, is that as you are tilting, and I've, uh, you, it will go, once the camera kind of reaches past a 45 degree angle, it will accelerate on its own. So, you know, you can't just be lifting the handle like that because the weight of the camera will actually carry it forward on its own. Um, otherwise, you have to put in so much tension here that it's really difficult to get a smooth movement. Now, that should in no way prevent you from maybe purchasing this uh, tripod head. And the reason I say that is that that is a that's a much higher grade of equipment feature. Um, I didn't expect this to do that, and so I'm not giving it a knock because it doesn't do that. I just want you to know that once you get past the 45 degree mark, the weight of the camera, depending on what it is. Now, if it's just a little point and shoot on the top of there, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. But if it's more of a, a heavier DSLR or mirrorless with a, with a Pro Series lens on it or something with a little weight to it, then you are going to have that tipping forward. The panning knob, um, on the model that I got, the panning knob is tighter than the tilt knob. So the tilt knob you know, moved relatively easy, and, and I, f I felt like it was good. The, the panning knob was stiffer substantially stiffer, so much so that, you know, when you're, when you're moving it, it kind of left indentations in your fingers a little bit. And maybe that's by design and maybe that's not. I don't know. But I found that to be just a little bit stiff. However, um, once I got it to where I wanted it, um, I found that the panning motion was quite smooth all the way around. And so I didn't have any issues with it. And so I guess essentially once you, once you get it, where you want it, you really won't be messing with that knob much. And so the fact that it's kind of a stiff um, turn, it's a, you know, just it's probably not much of an issue, but wanted to point it out. Um, two things that um, I liked that were nice on this that, that wouldn't have necessarily been on any, on other lower end inexpensive kind of fluid heads is, is the marks here that, so that you know, if you're going to do a, a time lapse or something along those lines and you want to make sure that you're always turning the same amount of distance, right? You've got these grid lines around here, and I find those to be really helpful. On, uh, on a $35 or $40 head, you know, I'm, I'm actually surprised that they put them on there, but it's a nice feature to have on there. As far as, um, well, let me, before I go into that, the tripod mount itself is a fairly good sized mount. And so, um, you know, what I liked about it was that it had some decent size and I actually like the cork on there. Um, what I didn't care for about it was the, the wing on the back to tighten it up. Uh, and that is, it's, it's a little proud of this. And so if you don't remember to flip it over, um, then, and you go to try to mount the head or the, the plate in the head, um, it'll bind up. And I actually left a couple of marks right there where it bound up on me. And it, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, I gotta remember to flip that little, that little piece down there. Um, other than that, I didn't really have any complaints. I mean, it, it, it tightened up and it stayed put. Um, the only other thing that I think would have made this nicer is if it was Arca Swiss. And, and, and I realized I'm not giving it any knock for not having an Arca Swiss. I just happen to have my other uh, plates are all Arca Swiss plates. And it would have been nice to be able to just have interchangeable plates and to be able to flip it between my ball head and between this one. And, and, and again, that, that's just a personal preference thing. So eh, take it for... Uh, what it will, what what you will in that respect. Um, it is important to note 
However, that this is an all plastic uh, build. And honestly, for $35 to $40, that's exactly what I expected to get was a plastic build. Um, and, and the ribs in here um, that for the for the tilt function and the, the way it, it binds those up, it's actually just putting pressure on those ribs. Um, and I didn't have any problems with making it work. And, and in terms of plastic, it's not flimsy plastic. I mean, it, it's pretty solidly built. It's just plastic. And I expect over time that these knobs here, um, the, the two kind of positive lock knobs, you know, how long are they going to last, you know, as they're seating into plastic and all that sort of stuff. But honestly, a year, two years, even three years would not would not seem outside the norm for me. I, I mean, I really do think that even with regular use, of course, if you're using this every day and you're using it to create an income stream, this is a great place to start to get to get used to one, but you're going to upgrade pretty quickly. But if you're like me, where it's an occasional use and it's not your daily driver um, and it's just, you know, something I wanted to go, okay, how badly do I really want to invest in a really good fluid head? Um, without spending some time with a fluid head and going, okay, well, is this the kind of shots I want to get? Is this really something I'm going to use in my workflow? Is it going to be one of those things? And in, uh, so time will tell on that. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised for a $35 to $45, a $40 uh, head for a, a, a pan tilt fluid head. Um, I'm not disappointed. I mean, I actually think it's a pretty good value. Um, you know, I mean, do I, would I call it professional? No, probably not. But would I, would I recommend it to somebody else? Yeah. I mean, I probably would. I have no reason not to. It, it's, it, it works fine. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. And, you know, knowing what its limitations are. And again, you know, set your expectations. You're not, you're not getting a $300 uh, fluid head for $35. You're getting a 35 to 50. In fact, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if I compared it to a couple of the $60 ones that I saw in their $60, $65 ones, it's going to hold head to head with those $60, $65 ones very likely. I mean, I haven't tested it against those, but again, for 35 bucks, which is what I paid for this, for 35 bucks, I'm not complaining at all. So I hope that helped you. Um, I hope it's something you find useful and, uh, well, Happy shooting.